Hi everybody, Saul Marquez with the Outcomes Rocket. Today I have the privilege of speaking with Kim Angelitas, the CEO of Vivante Health, here at the MedTech Innovation Conference. So, Kim, such a pleasure to have you here, and I'd love if you could just give us a brief intro on you and also Vivante and the challenge you guys are solving for. Uh, sure. Hey, thanks. It's a pleasure to, to speak with you and have a few laughs. So, um, yeah, so I'm. Uh, this is my fourth company uh, and actually my third company in digital health. Before this, uh, I had two biotech companies and then I had a diabetes uh, network, uh, uh, a network of diabetes centers all over the country. And then um, I started a company called EOS Health, which became Livongo. Um, and, you know, that went public in July. Um, that was a diabetes company with uh, digital health. And so um, after that scaled, um, I'm an entrepreneur, and so I decided that I would look for another area that w had an unmet need. And the uh, unmet need here is that um, every time I looked at uh, health plans and employers, that was really our customers, there was always this other category that was 30% and they had a very high drug spend. And then when I dug into it, it would be what I call the diseases that were uh, invisible neglected and stigmatized, you know, things like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, diseases that people don't really believe are diseases, and then this large category of digestive diseases, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, celiac, and so that's what we decided to do. We decided to actually uh, build a solution um, to be able to approach those, uh, those conditions. And that's what Vivante does. I think that's great. So focused on, on a particular digestive health, sounds like? Yeah, you know, um, the, the, the beauty of what uh, I think digital health can do or digital, digital medicine is that these types of diseases are really have got a long diagnostic delay. They're very subtle in their symptoms. It's not like you have diabetes and you have low blood sugar or high blood sugar. Um, these uh, require the capturing of a lot of information so that you can actually uh, make a diagnosis and look at the symptoms. And so. Um, digestive health and digestive disease. Um, it's a huge category. It's over 70 million people, twice as many as diabetes, and no one was doing it. And so uh, we just decided to plunge in, and that's what we did. Kim, super interesting. Um, you, you've had a lot of success in your various ventures, and and so it's it's fascinating that you've picked this for a reason. W what is it that distinguishes Vivante in the way that you can help this particular pa uh, patient set? Well, um, here's, here's, here's really the deal. The deal is, is that digestive conditions, different than diabetes or different than musculoskeletal, these are all uh, diseases that you know, employers and health plans have, have plans for and programs. But you have, you, know, you have the upper, you have reflux, you have the lower intestine. It's a huge broad spectrum of, of conditions. And so it's very difficult to tackle but I really think that digital medicine is really well suited for this. Um, and so what we have done different uh, is, is that we can look at all of these conditions by using um, digital therapeutics, um, what I would call therapeutic nutrition, uh, analytics, and then devices. So it's a multidisciplinary approach to the problem depending upon whether you have upper GI or whether you have lower, and it becomes sort of like a precision medicine platform. So that's the beauty of it. Yeah, no, I think it's really fascinating and sort of how you've categorized these different areas that can influence the, 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 the disease state. Uh, t tell us a little bit more about what inspires your work in healthcare. Well, you know, um, you know I go on and off of this. Uh, you know, I think, uh, again, I'm, I'm a very large uh, fan of digital, uh, it's called digital health now, but I think digital health is sort of just the monitoring phase. I really think it's sort of like you would call the banking industry. We're really going to be in the next phase, which will be digital medicine. And then after that will be digital therapeutics. And so I think we're on the path, at least at Vivante, at digital medicine. And then we're pretty close to some therapeutics as, as it would be a drug. So what I like about it is it, 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 it really um, provides access. There's a safety factor to it as well in terms of trying to increase uh, patient safety and increasing quality as an, as an extender, not a replacement of you know, the traditional healthcare. So I, I love the accessibility, to be able to, to provide healthcare at a low cost to lots of people um, in a very simple way. So that's what I like. I, I, and, I, and I personally like how you've uh, added some distinctions, right? You go from monitoring to medicine to therapeutics 
I had a good you know mentor once tell me those that are the most knowledgeable have have the ability to offer distinctions and so you, you've spent a lot of time in this business you've got some opportunity to have these distinctions uh, and very fascinating how you, you're approaching this uh, if you had to offer the the viewers and the listeners of today's interview uh, some some insights or, or calls to action what would that call to action be and where could they learn more about you and your company well you mean with respect to sort of the general area in, in healthcare or what we're what we're doing I, I think yeah I, I, yeah yeah I would say specifically to what you're doing well um, so so here's here's what I really think actually at least in most healthcare it it needs that there are a lot of solutions out there there are a lot of sort of things it needs to be able to have a clinical basis a clinical solution it needs to solve a clinical problem there's a lot of stuff I think in healthcare now that is just we're just doing it and I think you really need to take a look at the clinical sort of substrate and then be able to try to provide a solution that is not otherwise found in a you know physician contact for us um, that's really true too because just take a look at the typical person who's got irritable bowel syndrome um, 25 percent of all women have irritable bowel syndrome either it's constipation or it's diarrhea it's kind of really stigmatized um, they go to the gastroenterologist they do a scope, they say there's nothing wrong, and then they end up, it's all in your head. But here's what it is, you know, um, people who have irritable bowel syndrome, there is some physical issue, of course, but it's induced by stress, anxiety, lack of confidence, which, when you start to think about it, is that that sort of induces now diarrhea and constipation, and there's a brain-gut axis, because the brain actually talks directly to the gut. So a large component of what we do is try to get people on track to restore their confidence, to reduce the anxiety, to reduce the stress. And then once we clear the runway there, then we can actually start to work on the, on the uh, clinical part, okay? And then the third part, which is really cool, is using nutrition, not sort of meal plans like diabetes, but therapeutic nutrition. Um, and if I'll just take two seconds to, to do a deviation here, in your gut, and this is what we do, in your gut you've got a lot of bacteria, right? And the bacteria really are there to digest foods that your, your, your intestines can't, okay? So what happens essentially is, is that you'll ingest an undigestible food, i.e. By your, by your intestines, but it's the bacteria that does it. So depending upon what your complement of bacteria is or someone else, you eat something and sometimes it can produce a lot of gas and a lot of bloating and abdominal discomfort, all of those types of things. So our third prong is to find out on an individual basis what induces, what foods induce the inflammatory or the bloating response. And we can do that by software. We can actually titrate this as well to identify what are the trigger foods. So uh, psychosocial, confidence, anxiety, Two, clinical, three, ther therapeutic nutrition. All of these things can get uh, and relieve the symptoms of, of something like that. So that's holistic. Fascinating. Kim, uh, for the folks that want to learn more about what you guys are doing, what's the best place for them to check out your work? Yeah, take a look at uh, the website, uh, www.vivantehealth, uh, V-I-V-A-N-T-E-H-E-A-L-T-H.com, and they can see uh, you know, what we do and how we do it and some of our customers and the people that we, uh, that we serve. Thanks, Kim. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice job.